So guys, that's it now. Be made official shirt tailor as our new head coach. Now, we've said a lot of kind of, I have a feeling what we wanted to say in our podcast with Aaron McGowan, but now that it is official, what is the reaction? Brandon, me and you were at the press conference this afternoon. It was very good listening uh, from a fan's perspective. So um, where are you standing now? What were your thoughts on the press conference? How are you feeling? It was it was refreshing to hear some of the stuff he was saying, I suppose. I don't think he let much go, if I'm being honest. He, was, he kept his cards very close to his chest with, regard, with a lot of things that perhaps the fans might want to know. But um, everything he was asked, he responded in a very good manner. Um, he didn't say anything that fans wouldn't have wanted to hear. And no, it was a general good press conference and the vibe he got off him, that was the most important thing. Um, he, he got a vibe that somebody was not bullshitting you. That's what I, the most important thing I took away from it. Um, very honest. Um, he spoke to myself and you after it as well and um, put all his cards on the table, he explained how honest he wanted to be and he, how he feels honesty is the best policy for everything going forward, which long may that continue. But no, it was definitely refreshing to hear. I think, I think we'll... Only Aki's will have an opportunity to sit down with him and perhaps ask the sort of nitty-gritty questions that all the fans will want to hear. Um, but as an initial press conference, no, it was it was a really refreshing one and um, just positive vibes throughout. Yep, definitely. One of the one of the things I took away from it as well was he definitely seemed like he had a really good kind of um, idea of what fans expect and what the kind of i what the kind of mentality is of the fans at the moment. He was he, he spoke about building the relationship with the fans, improving on the relationship with the fans already. Um, you know, he opened up, like you said, to us afterwards and spoke very honestly about what he wants to do. And that was great to hear. I think he he was very he did keep a lot of things too close to his chest. Somebody asked about the type of play style they can expect him to see. Um, and he said uh, he has he knows what he wants to do, but he's not gonna tell us yet, which will come in time. Um, I think that was mostly out of respect, probably for Boozy and Cairns, who obviously had taken the training for the week, etc. But um, no, really, really kind of positive vibes. And I left that press conference feeling a lot more comfortable with his appointment. That, that's how I felt. David, now that it has been confirmed to you, has that changed any any ideas that you were speaking about yesterday? Or? Um, no, I think yeah, this is the first time where all the things that have happened in hindsight are kicking in before anything actually plays out this time. So press conferences, you're always going to get those positive notes and the promises and things like that. And that's all brilliant. And I'm optimistic about it going forward. I'll wait to see it play out because we've been through it all with Ryan Rice. Like you say, this is very much a carbon copy. So to be, far, um, to be fair, on on that, David, what I would say back to that is, I don't think it was selling a dream is in that press conference. It was asked, "Will you take Aki's sort of back up?" Um, and what he said is, "Aki's will go back up, but he doesn't expect perfection straight away." So, I we all want Aki's to go back to where we think we now belong because we've been in the Premier League for seven years in a row, ten out of the past fourteen seasons. But what he said there is, he's not telling us, no, I've came in, I'm taking it straight back up. He says, he's part of our journey here. We we will, we will go back up. Aki's will go back up. Um, but he's not overly sold it. So I think by us saying he's kept his cards close to, to, to his chest, most managers would come in and they would over, over promise or they would promise you this, this dream, i.e. Brian Rice going to come in with this attacking football you see it for two games and it's gone. He's not came in and said all that. So I feel like this appointment and just the manner he came across, he, de- he definitely has clued up. He's, he's done his research. He doesn't want to overly promise his stuff and sell us something that is going to come back and haunt him in a couple of months' time. So I feel like when we get down, when we get a chance to sit down with him and we talk about more in-depth things that the fans will want to know and um, we should put to him, we'll get a better grasp of certain things but I certainly feel I, I wasn't overly joyed with the appointment as I said beforehand it could have been a lot worse but it's an appointment that I was pleased with um, but after the after the press conference it has sort of 
strengthen my belief that it actually could be a good appointment if he gets the opportunity to actually put put everything he wants to have in place in place. You're talking about Taylor playing his cards close to his chest. That's what I'm kind of doing. We getting carried away and getting the hopes up at a new year. Um, I'm meaning just in general when you get a new manager and you're that relieved to see someone new in and you think about what this could lead to, you do get your hopes up. So it's nothing against Stuart Taylor. I, if anything, I do think it's good. I mean, he was part of a very good Aki team that played some very good football. Um, and I think, I mean, look at the kind of calibre the club he's been at over the last few years. I think it's all very positive. I'm just going to wait for it to see it play out. Um, one thing I've said a few times over the various podcasts is we we didn't we've never went out and got an experienced, tried and tested manager. We know is going to take us. The thing that I've said in the past is that the success with Alec Neil, even now, not completely this way, but I've always said it's almost by accident. We then we appointed a coach instead of getting an experienced manager, and it just happened to turn out brilliantly with Alec Neil. I'm hoping that the same thing will happen now. Because he was around Alec Neil, he's been around Billy Reid and Styles football we played then. I do find it more promising than it was when Rice was appointed, but we're going to see how it plays out. Because I do think we've said a few times we're only a couple of players away from having a squad that we as fans are happy with. Um, it's just going to see is how stern a word Stuart Taylor's going to have with the board while he get what he's. Because you've got to imagine that they've had conversations with strikers. Um, maybe a right back, that may be a promising thing for us as well. Maybe Stuart Taylor's going to come in and see, listen, the right back situation's not what we need. It's promising. I mean, it is promising. And it, like you say, how many times have we got an Aki's man in? You could argue that this is an Aki's man. So let's just hope that things change. Um, like I say, I'm, I'll, I'll wait till we see the proof in the pudding. But yeah, obviously I'm happy with the appointment. It could have been a lot worse. What he said, Owen, I think when we're talking about close to his chest, not giving too much away, we have to remember he's not even see, he's probably not even seen the team train yet. If he has, it's been once. Um, so I imagine after the game tomorrow and Asker he gets a training session two under his belt, that's when he'll be better equipped to then answer what improvements he he, he thinks are needed, um, what type of play he thinks they can implement with the team currently. I think that's when we get those answers. Um, we asked Alan Maitland about transfer targets and how that changes, how the appointment changes their plans, and he said it does change their plans. So we might be another another while before we look at getting a striker in and wait to see what Stuart Taylor's kind of ideas are on that. So that could be another little while as well. I think he gets, he gets it. Yep. It's yeah. a few, whatever you want to call it, it is, but um, I think it definitely does. It's n- it's no mass amounts of things that the fans think it were far away, and if the fa- if majority of fans think that, then you'd you'd imagine that he he, he seems very clued up. So, I, um, I don't think he, he'd be shy in going to the board and saying, "Listen, this is this is what I want. This is what we need." And I'm sure him and Maitland will have a, a discussion and see if it's plausible. Stuart Taylor, the team that he was a part of, he'll know the value of experience in that team. And the, especially on our occasion this year, the value of a good striker. I mean, I remember going to the games that season we got promoted and my dad actually used to be the biggest critic of Richard Offion. That he didn't play well, he was lazy, he didn't put a shift in, but the guy scored a ton of goals, and I absolutely adored the guy. I was probably the first striker, and it's me growing up as an Aki's fan, that really, like, that was all I was interested in, a player that would score goals and really be one to kind of catch the eye. Stuart Taylor will know the importance of having the right experience around young players like Alec Neal and these players, and the value of a clinical striker for a league campaign like he did with Richard Offiel. So. I have no doubt he'd be saying that to Maitland. He, he, said, he said that he, exactly what you said. He pretty much said a carbon copy of that when he was <laughs> quest, when he was questioned in the press conference. Um, so no, he, he pretty much did say that. He didn't go in depth about the sort of. On the record, we need to say that I was working. I've not seen anything yet. Right. <laughs> um, aye, so he, he he pretty much said a carbon copy of that. He said. Um, we didn't go in, in depth about it, specifically a striker, but he said how important it is to have a, a mixture of the 
experience. His his comparison was Alex Neil and Marco. Yep. And then they compared the two GMGs as well. He's no daft. He knows he knows what needs to be there. There's not exactly a wealth of experience in that team at the present moment. So that maybe says to me that's perhaps something that we might be looking at. Um, to be fair, I, I don't think there's many areas apart from right back and a striker that we need to improve on. Um, they're, the, they're the main positions if we improve on them then we've got a real good chance um, so hopefully hopefully yeah that will be the discussions they have next week hopefully the ideas he brings to the table are, are positive ones And overall a very positive uh, appointment from us and it seems on social media as well but let us know your thoughts in the comments or again on our social medias all the links are in the description thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you after the game